My name is Marielle Chamas and I'm from Bolivia. I was a teacher for 10 years and I worked as an education program coordinator in Ghana for a year. My name is Lynn Cora. I'm from Canada and I was a teacher in Edmonton, Alberta. <laughs> My name is Samantha Basili. I'm from Central Massachusetts. I'm at Teachers College and I study International Transcultural Study. My name is Mia Walter and I am studying philosophy and comparative international education and before that was a French teacher. I would say music and theater. I like cinema a lot too. I, I like foreign films more than American. And movies sometimes. Because I also love music. Music's I think a big part of my life. I love documentaries. Um, books and music, hands so. down. Definitely books and music. And also paintings. If I were in a museum, photography is my go-to art form. Definitely. I look at the faces and the shading, and I like to put myself in the photograph to see and play around with it. Oh. Hey, random kid who's sitting on a bed, <laughs> let's hang. Or like, hey, like topless boob lady, like, what, what's going on? I'll take my top off and we'll talk. You get to insert yourself in a new picture. That's really exciting for me. Sculptures? don't move me. Like sculptures of like a marble statue head or something, I doesn't, I don't care. I don't it's like opera, it doesn't move me at all. Before this class I would have said dance, especially modern dance, because I've watched it before and just been like, I don't get it, and I try to get it and I don't get it, but when Maxine Green was talking about how it's really important to like, try to like engage physically with the dancer, I was like, oh, maybe, and like I started like, just trying to feel what she was feeling, the dance through the performance, and so I think that's starting to change, but I still think dance is a little bit down there for me. As a teacher? Yeah, I do, because I feel like that's when I'm the most creative. And it's, for me, it's artistic. I'm not what society views as an artist. I can't draw, I can't write poetry. So I feel like when I'm teaching, I'm an actress. I'm thinking beyond, I'm going beyond the boundaries of whatever. And so I just feel like it is. For me, it's an artist. No, and I wish it was because it's really lacking in my life. I started yoga and that's really helped me have like a personal, some, some way that's for me because a lot of my work deals with helping others and giving myself up in order to make things happen for other people and sometimes it's easy to forget yourself and and so yoga has really helped me to center myself and and pay attention to myself and like have that selfish hour and a half or whatever when I'm just thinking about my blood flow and my energy flow and my sculpting my body and making myself stronger so I can perform my work but it's like my personal time. I can be artistic with, as a teacher, for sure. I get to be creative and um, think about things differently and in new ways and engage with people in new ways. Um, but part of the reason that I'm in this class is that I want to be able to do that more. Like, I feel like I need to do that more and that there's something missing. She's a rebel. She's a saint. She's the salt of the earth and she's dangerous. She's a rebel. Definitely, I hope so. I hope we can create our identities because otherwise we're prisoners to, I don't know, to something we've been born into or something that somebody else has chosen for us. So I do, I think that every day you, you kind of wake up and decide, make lots of decisions about who you're going to be and how you're going to be. Yeah, I do. I totally agree with that. I, I think that it's a choice you make. I think it's a choice we make, but we don't realize we have that choice sometimes. Uh -huh. And I think that that becomes what holds us back. I think I think for, I think of myself, and I just think that when you coming from a culture that's very restrictive or very prescribed, what you're going to be, how you should be, uh, what you're going to do. I think when you when you come from a culture like that, you assume that's what it's all about. Like you just kind of follow along. 
with what the norm is and with expectations. But once you realize that you have a choice in the matter, it changes your world. I think that's when you realize that no one, really you have the power to be who you want to be. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why it changes so often because we have new experiences and I don't change like the core of who I am, but my, as I go out and discover and learn new things, I build on the core. So I might like deviate and someone's like, oh, like you're being super weird today or like you're into this thing. I didn't think you would be into that. And it's just me trying something new out and seeing if it fits with my core and just getting a new experience. So I'm changing constantly. Definitely. And I think, um, I think a lot of people don't, aren't aware of that and they kind of get stuck and they think that they are who like, they, they've accepted themselves to be or what other people have told them they are and I think that this semester in school especially like I feel like a lot of my like understandings about myself have been like shaken up in this way that's really scary um, but also kind of exciting because I do think that in a way that like we like I forget the Maxine's words but we are who we're not quite yet uh -huh. um, and I think that it's really, I feel like I, I am, in, like there's so many possibilities. I've made choices. I've made choices about, about what I was going to be and what was going to be important to me. And I think that I definitely have followed the herd in the past and, I, and you do it, one does it all the time accidentally. But I, I, I do like to remember who I am and what I love to do and what's important to me. Before, a lot of it was with like reading books and listening to music, and I still do that, um, and like engaging with things like pure art forms, but I think that now I'm moving more towards like, I don't know, I think it's really important to engage with people, and I'm making like active choices to participate in the world. I think. Engaging with people and then stepping back and reflecting and engaging with books and literature and music and then reflecting. Mm -hmm. that I identify me as the people I've surrounded myself with. It, it helps me, in a way, have roots. I think there was a point in my life where I thought what identified me was what I did. And I think that was me really falling into um, what society deemed important. And so, at one point I think it was just what I did. It was just, I'm a student, I'm a teacher. That's what identified me. I'm in one of those stages where I'm going off the core and trying to figure out, going into every little nook and cranny of my, of my possible identity to figure out what resonates with me. So when I was little, it was based on um, my sports. I, I did sports, and if I was good enough at sports, then that was my identity. Or if I was good enough at school, then my academics were my identity. And now I feel like I have some more options. Sometimes I base it on like my family, my family origins. So that's a new thing that I haven't really thought about before to look to to find my identity. Sometimes it's with exploring my new work that makes that goes along with who I am and, and supports my identity. I feel like everything I say is gonna be like a um, like a limitation and I wanna take it back. Oh, even like saying I'm a French teacher, I'm I'm proud to be a teacher. But I feel like I'm so much more than that. Imagination is, is stretching out the limits. It's just going beyond what you know. And it's, a, and it's freedom. It's allowing yourself to, to stretch reality. Imagination has made me feel like nothing is impossible. If I want to stop working and spend thousands of dollars on an education, then so be it, I can do it. There's nothing stopping me. <laughs> it's exploring all possibilities and all of my passions and all of the things that really matter to me. Imagination for me is also like adding meaning and seeing poetry in, in like everyday things and trying to make sense of the world around you um, when information isn't always there. Imagination 
to something that's in your mind before it's actually reality, then definitely it's playing into who I am. Because I chose my path when I was a little girl. Like, and of course it wasn't a reality. I hadn't done it, but I decided that these were things I was going to do, the things I've done. Most of the things that have happened in my life. So they were, they were somewhere. They were in imagination first, uh -huh. and now they're real. And who knows, who knows what's going to come? Yeah. I'm not really good, I think, at the imagination part because, as I said before, I'm a bit of a realist, and so there's times where I get gung ho about this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for it, and there's nothing stopping me. But then reality creeps in, and I find that then. So, like that imagination that like just don't that that I can't take no for an answer that no one should, should no one can tell me that my dreams are wrong that if I know that it's true in my heart and like in that that pit in your stomach that just feels good then I'm going for it so the imagination can help you get into your ideal situation in the classroom I like, I mean, I incorporate it all the time. I'm, I'm a French language teacher, and the students don't get to speak French with other French speakers, and so we will create a lot of skits. We speak, I try to speak exclusively in French, and sometimes, um, so that I can teach them different parts of the language, I'll dress up in costume, and so like I'll go out of the classroom and then come back as a different character. And my students are high school students um, in, not the best neighborhood of Chicago, and you'd think that they wouldn't be that excited about seeing their teacher dress up, but they love it. They'll act as though they're a French person sometimes, or they're, they pretend, they have to sometimes pretend that they can speak French better than they really can so that they have the courage to actually try. Um, so I think imagination plays a role there. I did my thesis proposal to build a community center for literacy in the Eastern DRC because I visited this, this rural town. I talked with the NGO coordinator um, six or eight months after my trip, my summer trip, and told him that I wanted to do this project. He said, sure. And I said, just tell me, like, draw your ideal community center. Just draw it. Because if you want it, then we're going to make this happen. Don't, don't hold anything. So he didn't. He drew up a $1.5 million budget, <laughs> which doesn't really help me. But he, but just, like, I was so proud and happy. That is like imagination in action right there. When he sent me this this 1.5 million dollar budget for like three huge buildings in this little rural village, but but it's uh, that was really powerful. So now I have to use my imagination for action in order to get the money and fundraise for this project or somehow figure out how to do it. I am. I'd say I'm sensitive, like emotionally very sensitive. I'm a loud, oh, obnoxious laugher. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to beat you, but you so hot that I melted. I fell right I'm through the crowd. I'm a teacher. And I'm trying to get back. Before the cool done. I'm a builder. I would say I'm a student. I'm a friend. <laughs> and I'm a good friend. Yeah. I'm a partner and I'm a friend and I'm a daughter. I'm a daughter. I'm a mother. I'm a realist. What are you? I'm your Well, open up your mind and see like me Open up your plans and damn you're free Look into your heart and you'll find love, love, love Listen to the music of the moment, maybe sing with me Yummy, yummy, chocolate! Oh, melody, it's your God forsaken right to be loved, love, love, love